Father, for all our sins. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. For our first song, let us sing, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Day. So we should be joyful today. us how to love each other our next song is great is thy faithfulness
Indeed, great is thy faithfulness. So welcome to our Sabbath school. Those who are here, you can wave your hands or you can stand up and give each other a hug. I think it's okay. And those who are watching us live on our Facebook and YouTube, welcome to Argyle Forest SDA Company. And this is our Sabbath school. As we open up, we have our opening song is Rejoice Ye Pure in Heart. Let us all stand in your church hymnal, hymn number 27. remain standing. Our scripture, our scripture reading for today is found in Philippians chapter 4, verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I say, rejoice. Okay, let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we all give thanks and sing with joy this morning because great is your faithfulness. We may have difficult circumstances and challenges in our lives, but thank you, Lord, that we can rejoice because your mercy and compassion never fails. We pray, Father, that in this worship service this morning, every one of us will be blessed, including those watching online. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may all be seated. So our mission story today is entitled, It's Time to Think Outside the Box. So, you know, it's, it's a challenge for us. You know, it's, it's difficult or it's been a challenge for everyone to reach out to major cities, to reach out for mission to millions of people in the cities around the world. But let us watch some of these Adventist churches, the, how, um, how they branch, uh, branch out to come up with some ideas outside the box as they build center of influence. A major challenge in mission is finding ways to reach the millions of people in cities around the world. The list of cities with a population of one million or more residents continues to grow. In response to this challenge, a number of churches in different cities have opened up urban centers of influence. Many of these centers function as language schools, health stores, restaurants, juice bars, and so on. But some groups have branched out and come up with ideas that are outside the box. In Frankfurt, Germany, Presence Culture Lounge invites people from the diverse community to come together and participate in different cultural activities. These include cooking and eating together, watching films and discussing them, participating in literature nights, and organizing art exhibitions. The events encourage individuals of similar interests 
but of different religious and cultural backgrounds to engage in conversations and to make connections. Pastor Simran Mahari, the founder of the center, says that in a secular society where the majority of people are skeptical of organized religion, the center is a place where people can feel they belong. Brian Atwell and his wife moved from the United States to Bangkok, Thailand, and opened a rock climbing gym. They had seen a documentary about Bangkok that revealed the need for general health education. The Atwells wanted to help people in this city know that they could take control of their health and avoid depending on costly medicine. They are now making connections with people using a fun and healthy activity. Songyuk Medical Center in Seoul, South Korea operates a two-story funeral home that also includes private apartments where grieving families stay as they mourn the loss of loved ones. In a country where much importance is given to funerals, the chaplains see the funeral service as an opportunity to share the hope of eternal life with the family members. This message is new to many of them, and families leave the service comforted and touched by the message. The funerals have also made a difference in the lives of the employees. Almost all of them are now baptized members of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Adventists in Supa, Fiji, don't need four walls and a roof to run a center of influence. They're using a park located in the center of the city to provide food to the homeless every week. They also invite the park visitors to join them in Bible studies and in health and city ministries. Many of the homeless have had their lives transformed as they come to learn of a God who cares for their needs because of the services provided by the church members. If you are considering taking up the challenge to serve the cities, visit the Mission to the Cities website for ways that you can get involved. That's beautiful. So it's a challenge, you know, um, reaching out to the people in the cities. It gives us an idea, you know, to, to forward mission by doing, doing some of these things in the city and building center of influence. So at this time, let us collect our Sabbath school offering. You can bring your offering here in the front. But before that, let us have a word of prayer. Most gracious, kind, loving Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the many blessings that we have received from thee. And we thank you for all the, how you have provided us daily, our, our jobs, our work, and the many things that we have, you have showered into our lives. We pray, Father, that as we return this offering to you, Lord, we pray that this can help with a mission around the world, just like what we have seen today, buildings, center of influence around the cities thank you father and may you continue to bless all of us forgive us for our sins and make us your holy thine in jesus name we pray amen
Thank you, John. So at this time, let us separate for our respective classes. Um, Elder Wen will be doing the adult lesson. Um, we don't have the new beginnings. Brother James is not around, so um, those in the new beginnings will just join the adult here in the sanctuary. And I will have the primary and the kindergarten will be at the back. So we should be back here by 10.45. Good morning and happy Sabbath. We are doing the lesson today, uh, A Life of Praise. How many of us are living in a life of praise? I believe it's everybody, right? You know, uh, and we have to rejoice with the Lord. And everybody has a reason to rejoice with the Lord. As I was walking, inside the church this morning. I say, I uh, meet a uh, brother, a uh, sister, sister uh, uh, Mar, sister, my sister there, my mom. She said, you know what, next week, I am 88 years old. And that is a reason for us to rejoice. Having to live a long, satisfied life like that. And you know what she said? You know, my brother, she died. he died around over 90 years old. And his sister also, her, her sister also, passed away over 90 years old. So you're on the way there. So everybody has a reason to rejoice living a long, satisfied life. However... It is not, it is always easy to shout, we joy the Lord if we are happy, right? If something is going right. But it is not always easy though when things are not going on our way. And when we are in the worst situation possible, it's not always easy. That's true, right? Sometimes we re-experience that. But in both situations, good or bad, we need to praise God more than ever. And that is precisely what we need. Because praise helps us to sustain our faith. Yes, praise, praise can transform even our darkest circumstances into light. We know that we cannot avoid or evade any circumstances that come in our life. But one thing we do is how we know how to respond to these circumstances. We praise God in the middle of these adversities because with our faith, He can turn those situations around for our own good and for our own advantages. According to our lesson, praise are not always natural to us, but we can practice it. That can be practiced so that it can be a natural part in our lives. 
because it has the power to convert or conquer, which we will discuss that in a few minutes later. Now, that is our uh, scripture reading. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. That's Philippians 4, 4. And then here, Philippians 4, 4. I think in our lesson, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Verse 4, 5 says, let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing. I believe a lot of us know this verse. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God and the peace of God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ. You know, in this lesson, we have seen, we have seen that Paul endured hardships, but he rejoices in spite of his adversities. He was in prison, right? Can anyone briefly describe Paul's situation while he was in prison? Because he was in prison. When he wrote the four epistles, actually, in the Bible, we have the Ephesians, he wrote that in the prison. We have the Philippians, he wrote that in prison. We have the Colossians, and also a letter to Philemon. Can anyone describe how it is to be in prison? Because he was in prison when he wrote those epistles. You know, he was in the dungeon. And a lot of people believe that in the dungeon itself, the sewage system is running adjacent to the prison cell. Could you imagine how difficult that was? How uncomfortable that was? You know, that's probably, yes, sister. Yes. Knowing your mind cannot be in prison. No matter where you are, you have got to have that mind stayed on Christ. In, so your circumstances in no way should imprison you. Exactly. The situations around him is uncomfortable, but his mind is liberated. Yes, brother. In, in Philippians, he wrote this while he was in Rome. The, the prison that they're talking about of that particular thing was more of an in-house arrest. It was not a dungeon that he was in while he was in Rome. Because okay. When we read right. about him, he was renting a house. Okay. He had friends with him. Timothy was with him. You know, while he wrote this, while he was in Rome. So he was more of an in-house arrest for this particular uh, book of the, of the New Testament. Thank you, uh, brother. You know, although sometimes it's uncomfortable, like, like uh, what his sister said, his mind is always focused on Jesus. That's probably where he wrote when he was in inspired to write, I can do all things through Christ, which is strengthen me, in spite of the surroundings that he was in. Yes. Right. 
and also that's probably because of his focus. He is not defeated, and he said, "The it causes me to triumph." I, there is a verse like that. Yes, you know. It is one thing to rejoice when everything is going well. But, told, but Paul told us to rejoice always. Does that sound strange to you? Rejoicing always? You know, first, we are to rejoice always. It must mean that we should be rejoicing even when our circumstances do not appear to give any grounds for us to be rejoicing. Second, if we go, if we are to rejoice always, it must also mean that we are going to have to learn to rejoice at times when we don't feel like it. Is that a right assessment? I think, I think it is. Because, you know, our life is just like a roller coaster. Sometimes we are down when we are down, and up when we are up. You know, uh, the, the circumstances around us are, sometimes we cannot control. It is beyond our control. They just come. We don't invite them. But what we can control, though, is how are you able to respond to those circumstances? Are you going to respond in your circumstances negatively or positively or rejoicing, praising the Lord? Because those hardships sometimes are for your own benefit, for your own advantage, because it will make your faith and praise strengthen. Yes, brother. There was a tornado that came through our place. Yes. Uh, quite a few years back. And it missed the house, but we had a huge mess. We had over a hundred big, giant pine trees just snapped and laying all over the place. Yes. I mean, it was, it was a daunting, just, I mean, it was devastation, right? And a friend came over, Cortez Mathis. He wanted to see it. So I took him out and showed it to him. And I was like, oh, man, what am I going to do with this, you know? And he says, brother, he says, what a blessing you have. Yeah, he would have listened yet. I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> you know? Well, years later, after, because it took a few years to clean it up, you know what I mean? Uh, it was a blessing. It is a blessing, yes. I couldn't see it at the time, but he did, you know? And he, and he says, oh, what a blessing. And I was just like, what? What a lesson I learned from that. Yes, brother. Do you know that after such devastation comes the most beautiful sunrise? It just passed away. Those things pass away, but after that, sunrise will come. As long as the sun is always shining, we have that hope. And Jesus is our sunshine. Jesus is our hope. You know, uh, in the verse, rejoice in the Lord always, again, rejoice. If you notice that, rejoicing is mentioned two times, right? So it stresses the importance of rejoicing to the Lord. In the military, we call that double time. I mean, double output. You know, uh, so, we have to increase our output with Jesus by rejoicing. Double. Yes, sister. Give her a piece of my mind. I was really disturbed. 
But I said, you know what? I'm not going to make her feel uncomfortable. You know what I did? I start singing. Singing, yeah, Rushing yes. And, uh -huh. and singing. Before I knew it, both of us were singing. <laughs> I don't know where that, you know, that <laughs> session went. <laughs> and we just start to sing and praise God. It works. It works. It works. It just that one time, it worked for me. You know the impact that will do to other people if you are singing in spite of adversities? It, you know, give me what, what you have. <laughs> you know, uh, in, in the passage that we read, read, what are the keys to gaining peace of God? Because in, the, in, the, in our passage that we read here, it says, uh, And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ. What are the keys? These are the question actually in the lesson. What are the keys in gaining the peace of God? And how do you think Paul could have written such things when he himself sitting in a prison? But let's first answer number one. How can... What are the keys of gaining the peace of God? Yeah, you know, sometimes if we have peace of God when it's from the verse itself, when we are not anxious of anything, we are free because we have the Lord is in us. We are not anxious for anything. We have a peace of God when we know that our answers, our prayers were answered, right? Because God will answer all prayers according in his own time. Yeah, you know, he might not be answering your prayers in time that you wanted to. However, he might have greater answer that you have in your mind. You know, more positive answer that you have in your mind. So, I believe that... Uh, When he died on the cross, we have peace of God because your names, my name, are all etched in the palm of his hands. Because he died of he all he died for all of us. And also he is guarding our minds, it's isn't there, and hearts. That means if he is guarding our minds and hearts, what happens? He fights the enemy for us. Right? He is on guard. He think about us. Okay, uh, screen four. Paul is calling us to praise God even though many times and it may seem quite unnatural. It's natural for us. Unnatural for us or unreasonable to us. There are times when it appears unreasonable that we are called to rejoice. Right? Praise is an act of faith. I'm just reading here. Praise is not based on our circumstances, but rather on the truth of who God is. That's a nice statement there. And what he has promised to us. So faith is not based on our circumstances. What we encounter in our lives. Good or bad. But rather the truth of God. The truth of who God is. And what he has promised to us. It is such faith that begins to shape. To mold you. To shape us. Our thoughts. Our feelings and our circumstances. So what are the truth of God? What are the truth of God? That's in our lesson. That enable us to rejoice even when we are prisoners of or from our negative circumstances. What are the truth of God? 
Think of his promises. Yes, brother. He's faithful. He is faithful, yes. Any other one? Yes. What are the truth of God? Any any comment, sister Rose? I know you have a lot of things in your mind right now. <laughs> okay. I just would like to read something here about Paul. And he said that if we believe him, we must do two things. Number one, we must praise God both in good times and in bad times. Yes, yes. Number two, uh -huh. we must learn to praise God at times that we do not want to praise Him at all. Yes. But that's going to be very hard because feeling happy is hard when sad things happen. But Paul encourages us to feel joyful always. To rejoice always, yes. So, bad or good, we must praise God. Okay? One example that I could think of is, you know, the truth of God is, is one that no weapon that is formed against us will prosper and succeed. You know, and we have to thank to God because He always causes us to triumph no matter what. If you believe that, if you itch that in your heart, it's going to happen. We always, it causes us to triumph. And weeping we may endure for the night, but joy is coming in the morning. How about that? That's the truth of God. You know, uh, and he said, I have plans for you. That's plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Those are beautiful words that signifies the truth of God, who, who God is. And you know what? The truth is God is preparing a place for us. You know? Okay, let me see here. I think... Okay. Now, Monday's lesson is uh, praying down the walls. Down the walls, that's Monday. <laughs> you know, let me read here. God brought the Israelites to a corner after they had wandered 40 years in the wilderness. God led them to one of the most strongly fortified cities in the whole area. That's Jericho. There they had to walk around in Jericho in silence six times. Six days, right? Six days. On the seventh day, you know, God told them to shout. And that shouting together with, trump with trumpets would bring, would bring victory. You know, So, we also have our Jericho in our own lives, right? Where we just walk around and walk around with all our circumstances. But if we shout to the Lord, that will bring us to victory. Okay, uh, in Joshua 5.13, and it came to pass when Joshua was, in Je was by Jericho, he lifted his eyes and looked, and behold, a man stood opposite him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua, Joshua went, he went to him and, and said to him, Are you for us or for our adversaries? Are we in our side or you are in the side of our adversaries? Are you for us or are you against us? But you know what? That man is actually 
the commander of the army of the Lord. So, he is for them. So, on Joshua 6.20, So the people shouted when the priest blew the trumpets, and it happened when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, and the people shouted with great shout, the wall fell down flat. You know, then the people went up to the, into the city. Every man is straight before him. They took the city. Now, the question is, what is God trying to teach the Israelites here? Okay. Uh, here's a comment here. When God called the Israelites to shout, it was the same type of shouting that David writes about in Psalm 66. Shout for the joy to God, all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Make his praise glorious. The shouting was praise, actually. The shouting was praise. After six days of looking at the huge walls, there are fortified cities, they must have, they must have concluded that they had, they had a chance. They concluded that they don't have a chance to break the wall. And question, was shouting vibrations triggered the wall to collapse? No. Right? It did not trigger the wall to collapse by shouting. It is actually a praise to the Lord when they shout with the trumpets praising the Lord enable the wall to collapse. So, you know, okay, uh, screen nine. When God is on the verge of doing something new in our lives, because, yes, brother. Right before Jericho, there was a lot that happened. Yes. Uh -huh. and, and it fits in with this, this lesson, but it's not mentioned in the lesson. Well, yeah, yes. So uh -huh. Moses died. I'm right. Not, okay. God buried him. Okay. Satan came and contended for the body of Moses. He was rebuked. Okay? So they, they mourned for Moses for 30 days. At the end of the 30 days, God came to Joshua and said, My servant Moses is dead. You lead the people into the promised land. Mm -hmm. So he goes to the, to the generals, you know, the leaders of Israel, and says, Prepare the victuals and the people, for in three days we're going to cross the river and go into the promised land. Right, right. He's the new leader. Joshua. Joshua. Now the people that came out of, East, uh, out of Egypt didn't do well without a leader. Because when Moses went up to the mountain for 40 days, what did they do? They made a, a, an image, a golden image of a calf. Okay? So they were tested here for 30 days. They had no leader. Right, right. So the new Israelite people, they did well. Okay, so they have a new leader now, an untested leader. So this new untested leader leads them across Jordan and God creates, you know, does a miracle with the water, like he did for Moses, right? Showing that this is the one he chose as the leader. They go across and they're invading a, a new land with hostiles. Okay? Mm -hmm. What's the first thing that the untested new leader commands them to do? Circumcise every single man. Every single man, yes. This yeah. makes them vulnerable for attack. <laughs> for three days, they can't defend themselves. They're right. being tested by God to see if they're the same as the, as the type of Israelite that came out of Egypt. And they passed the test. So now they come to Jericho, 
with an untested leader. Uh -huh. <laughs> and God gives them the city. Nothing that the leader did, nothing that the people did was God's doing. Right. But he was testing them the whole way, and they passed all their tests. Yes, that's a good, that a good, that's a good comment, brother, because when we are in, not in our own natural ability, God will show up with his supernatural ability. He was with them. Of course, those are circumcised and they are immobile. They cannot move quick. They are not spring chicken, but God is there with them to supplement their abilities. Yeah, they, they, they still have to face the enemy no matter what. But God is there with them. You know, the first verse a while ago that the commander of the army was with them, commander of the army of the Lord was with them, and he was for them. Because God knows that they will test them first. When they circumcises this uh, young lad, they were immobile, but God is there. Sent commander of the army of the Lord is there to defend for them. Yes, brother. In, in Joshua chapter 1, when God comes and tells Joshua to prepare the people to go into the promised land and lead them into the promised land, mm -hmm. he calls the, all the leaders together and, and, and tells them the things that Moses had said that they should do when they go across. And then it was up to the leaders to decide if he was going to be their leader. And they swore allegiance to him. And they said that any man that would not obey you, that they would kill. Mm -hmm. That was when he was inaugurated to be their leader by themselves. That's when they accepted him as their leader. Yes. Okay, let's go to... Let me see. When God is on the verge of doing something new in our lives, he may also bring us to Jericho. For he may need to teach us that the power of triumph does not come, does not come from our own strength, right? And strategies. You know, everybody got the strategies. Everything we need comes from outside our, ourselves. So no matter what is, it is in front of us, no matter how insurmountable it may seem, our role is to praise God. That's our role. Because He is the source of everything, everything that we need. That is faith in action. How can we practice faith? Practice, according to our lesson, is practice. Praise is practice as we look around us. When you look around you, you could see the things that God created. It's faith. Even in your body, we have faith because He formed us the way it should be. Remember if He formed His hand to be straight and you eat? You cannot bear it. So that's faith. You know, he formed us according to his will. Number two, praise is practice as we remember what we have seen. 
We have seen all the glory of God is in front of us. We practice faith like that. Praise is practiced as we talk about it. We talk about all the verses in the Bible. We look around in our Bible and see the beautiful promises. If we remember what we have seen, that's faith. Praise is practiced as we talk about it. We just don't think about it. We have to speak it out to practice faith. You know, let's be honest. In just this lesson, it says praise is faith in action. It is always not natural to us. No, it is not natural to us. Praise, if praising the Lord might, be nat might not be natural to us, even in good circumstances. Because in, even in good circumstances, praise is not natural to us. How much more to exercise faith during difficult times? Now we're going to go to Wednesday's lesson. Witness, a witness who convicts. That's Wednesday's lesson. Can somebody relate what happened to Paul and Silas when they were in prison? Can somebody relate what happened? There's a lot of things that happened to them. Yes, yes. They were stripped and beaten. That's what happened. And according to our lesson, no one is there to give any kind of treatment. Of course, when you are bleeding, you need some kind of treatment, but no one is there. And they were placed in the darkness of inner prison. You know when it is dark, you know. <laughs> you don't know what's going to happen. You probably some cockroaches, you know, roaming around you or your body, you know. But you know what they did? You know what happened? They sang and prayed as the other prisoners around them were listening. You know what the impact that was? And then after that, earthquake occurred. There was a big earthquake. And that will be a chance for them to escape. But no one, not one of them escaped. Why? There was, of course, a jailer, a guard, a jailer, who was trembling because he saw what happened. And you know what the jailer did? The jailer, he simultaneously asked them, Sirs, sirs, what do I do to get saved? Wow, that's a direct question that needs direct answer. What shall I do to be saved? And you know what happened? The jailer and his family were converted. 
That's what happened. So what role do you think Paul and Silas' prayers and songs played in the prisoners not running away and in the conversion of this, of this man and his own family? What role? Because of their demonstration of faith. This is strong demonstration of faith and praises to God in spite of the difficulties, in spite of the trivial things that happen to them. Because they were beaten. They probably were oozing blood in their bodies, but they are still praising God. Are you able to praise God in such bad circumstances? Is it natural for you to praise God even though things happen in your life that are not for you, not for you? Because it says in our lesson, even in our good times, it is not natural for us to praise God. How much more if we are just like Paul and Silas? And you know, the faith they demonstrated Paul and Silas give greater hope for others. That's the impact of what they did. The song of praise has a positive effect not only upon the jailer but also amongst the prisoners inside the prison. Yes, brother. Prisons then and now are basically the same. They're filled with bad people. They're, they're filled with mean, violent, lawless people. All and Silas weren't just put in with them. They were put in them and made vulnerable because their feet were, were put in, in, in a device where they could not move. When you are put in with people like that, you don't want to be noticed. Mm -hmm. If you start being loud, you're, you're, you're putting a target on yourself. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay? <laughs> so this unnatural thinking, right. you know, is, is what God called them to do. Uh, so do, they, do. They went in there and they made themselves, well, they didn't make themselves, they became vulnerable. In with the worst of the worst of violent, mean, evil people. Mm -hmm. And they started singing, praising, and praying so that all the people, all these people could hear because mm -hmm. they were trying to reach them. Yeah. So in spite of their circumstances, it impacted a lot of people. And a lot of people wanted what they have. Do we want what Paul and Silas experienced? Do we want that in our lives? We are experiencing a lot of troubles, circumstances that we cannot understand. That it, we don't know what to do. However, if you don't know what to do, God it's on you. Right? Thank you. Thank you, sister. That's a beautiful comment. Now, uh, on Thursday's lesson, a weapon that concurs. A weapon will concur us, right? A weapon that concurs. First, let me ask you, what is the most powerful weapon that conquers? Prayer. Prayer, okay. 
That's one of those. Praise. Yes. I, I, uh, I know, yeah, I, Bible? I, I can't hear you that much. Because she I, said the Bible. Sorry? She said the Bible. The Bible, yes. The Bible encompasses everything. It is the foundation of all knowledge. You know, Bible, I like that. Yes. What else conquers? Faith. Faith. Without faith, there is no praise. Yes. If there's no faith, there's no hope. Faith is something we hope for. Something what we do not see. Right? You know the story of Jehoshaphat? You know? Jehoshaphat discovered that praise is a powerful weapon. Thank you, Sister Praise. Bible, faith, and all those things. Because of the Bible, we praise God. Because of the Bible, we have faith in God. Because of the Bible, we praise God. After receiving a report that a vast army was coming against Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat has a lot of military army, right? But he did not resort immediately into military action. Right? You know what he did? In his dilemma, he resolved to inquire God first. And he, uh, he admitted that they have no power to face the vast army that is attacking them. You know, if you are surrounded with armies and you are, you know, there's no escape route, First thing he did is inquire God what to do. That's it is why he knows this principle. If you do not do, if you do not know what to do, God is always on you. You may not know what to do in our own lives. We may have some children that are not praising God. We may have some husband or wife that are abandoning us. There's a lot of things that we might not know what to do. But God is on us. He will not abandon us. He is for us. He is thinking about us. Our names is H in the palm of his hands. So, brothers and sisters, as the Spirit of the Lord came upon, okay, let me see here. So, God intervened at the moment they exercised their faith. So, without any further ado, brothers and sisters, I think we could learn a lesson that will apply that in our lives because God is always with us. God is always for us. And no weapon that is formed against us. It did not say that they will not form against us. They will form against us, but they will not prosper and succeed. Amen? All right. Thank you. And uh, thank you, Lord, that uh, we have tackled your words this morning and studied a lesson that will strengthen us. And we ask you, O oh God, to 
Oh, surround us with your power because many times we don't know what to do. But we our eyes on you. This is a song that says we have to set our eyes upon Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. and it's coming from the spirit of prophecy. The Bible faithfully records the prayers of such patriarchs and prophets as Abraham, Jacob, Moses, David, Solomon, Jeremiah, Peter, Paul, and especially Jesus. We see an example of this in the beautiful and personal prayer of Jesus in John 17. Ellen White was also a person of prayer. It was a vital part of her Christian experience. While still a teenager, Ellen found courage to pray publicly with others at her uncle's home in Portland, Maine. She recalled this transformational experience with his words. As I prayed, the burden and agony of soul that I had so long endured left me, and the blessing of the Lord descended upon me like the gentle dew. I praised God from the depths of my heart. She was filled with assurance and confidence in God. She, this led her to share her testimony with other Adventists looking forward to the soon coming of Jesus. In her later years, prayer remained an indispensable component of both her public and private experience. HMS Richard Sr., founder of the radio broadcast ministry, Voice of Prophecy, vividly remember the prayer offered by Ellen at a meeting in Boulder, Colorado when he was only 15 years old. I was sitting at her left hand about, oh, 15 feet from her. The platform was about a foot, a foot high, and she had the big, thick Bible, and she was preaching, faithfully giving God's message. After concluding her message, she and the audience knelt in prayer. I can hear her now. She said, she said not our father, but oh my father. And from that time on, it was a personal communion between her and her heavenly father. In just a minute or two, there seemed to be such a mighty power come over that meeting. I felt it. I was just a boy and I could feel that power until finally I was afraid to look up for fear I would see God standing right there by her. She was talking with him. She had forgotten all about us and she was in the presence of the Lord. A minute or two more went by and that whole crowd, you could hear them weeping, crying over their sin. A tremendous revival 
spiritual revival, the mighty power of God. Richards then made a profound observation when she preached. God blessed her as a preacher, but when she began to pray, he honored her as his prophet before the people. The public prayers of the Lord's messenger brought powerful changes to the lives of those who prayed with her. Let us now divide into two or three or more and pray with one another. Thank you. Test one, test two. Testing one, testing two. Test one, test two. Test two, test one, test two. Test one, test two. Test one, test two. Testing one, testing two. Testing one, testing two. Test, 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 test.
Mic check. Test one, test two. Mic check. At this time, I would like to call in the following participants to please gather on my right side to pray. Elder Juan Donales, Sister Jackie Williams, Brother Chris Masodin, Brother Rain Agrabante, and Pastor Hassan Ceylon. Good morning, Happy Sabbath Church. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer before we begin. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful Sabbath morning, Lord. We thank you for your love and mercy. Thank you for the gift of life, Lord. Lord, please be with us today as we sing songs and praises to give glory to your name. Amen. Very warm welcome to our church family, friends, guests, and online worshipers to Argyle SDA Company. Let's continue our service this morning by lifting our voices to sing songs and praises to our Lord, our King. For today's expression of songs and praise, we'll be singing hymn number 221 from our Seventh-day Adventist hymnal, Rejoice the Lord is King, and I Believe in a Hill Called Man Calvary. Please join us. Rejoice, the Lord is King, your Lord and King adore. Rejoice, give thanks and sing and try and evermore. Leap of your heart, leap of your voice, rejoice again, I say, rejoice. Rejoice in glorious hope, our Lord the just shall come and take his servant up to their eternal home. Leap by your heart, leap 
with a few voice rejoice I'm gonna say rejoice there are things as we travel these earth shifting sands the consent of the reason of man but the things that matter the most in this world they can never be held in our hand I believe in the hill called Macambury I believe whatever that cost and with time has surrendered and earth is no more I still cling to the old ragged cross I believe that this life with this great mysteries surely some they will come to an end but fear will conquer the darkness and death and will lead me at last to my friend I believe in a hill called Mount Calvary. I believe whatever that cost. And with time has surrendered and earth is no more. I stay clean. To the all again cross. Amen. Yeah. Well. Apuram. Apuram. Happy Sabbath, everyone. It's okay. It is a joy and a blessing to have visitors in front of us this morning. We have uh, Wef Ponti from Saudi Arabia. He just came from Saudi Arabia. He's actually a, uh, a nurse, dialysis nurse. And also we have Angel and Ted coming f straight from the Philippines. You're welcome. And uh, we have, uh, of course, our brothers and sisters from Indonesia. Salamat Sabah. Salamat Datang. You know, I just learned that in Indonesia they call, they don't call them by they, they call their parents by their names they call their father Tom Paul and their mother is Miso Tom Paul and also Rosa is Rosa Tom Paul you know you know sometimes we know that uh, we will have the same language in heaven natural language we are no longer visitor there in heaven and we also have the uh, uh, grandfather of Zach from Oakwood. Thank you for coming to worship with us today. And of course, we always have the beautiful children of Zern. We got Dawson, we got Carson, we got Isaiah, we got Kayla, we got Jaden and Carter, 
Thank you for joining us today. Any other visitor that I miss? Yes, and uh, brother and sister, thank you for welcoming, for coming with, to worship with us today. Any other visitor? And you're from? Hey, thank you. It's a blessing that you are with us today. And we also have uh, Margo. Margo is a nurse. Thank you for visiting with us today. I hope you will consider this place as your permanent church. And to all our permanent visitors here today, thank you that you are with us. And we have an announcement. Uh, there is a disaster response preparedness. It's going to be in uh, Pompano Beach, and it will be held in October 14 and 16, 2022. I think it is in preparation of uh, hurricane, something like that, or any calamities, for Twitter's event that may happen to us that we don't know that's coming. So, uh, that's probably a good uh, place to attend. It's going to be in August 31st. Registration deadline is August 31st, 2022. And uh, I believe that one day soon, we are permanently settled in heaven. We are no longer visitors there. So, we have to thank you for that. Now, in our worship to the Lord, I will read part of what we have here in Psalm 65, 1, 4. Praise is rightfully yours. God is Zion. Vows to, the, vows to you must be fulfilled for you answer our prayer. All flesh must come to you with all its sins. And though our faults overpower us, you blot, out, you blot them out. Happy the man you choose. You cho you, he chose us all. Whom you invite to live in your courts. Fill us with good things of your house, of your holy temple. May the Lord add his blessings to his word. Let's open our hearts and mind for our divine service by singing hymn number 405, Near to the Heart of God. Christian soldiers rise 
Oppress the battle ere the night shall veil the glowing skies. Against the foe in veils below, let all a strength be heard. Faith is the victory we know that overcomes the world. Faith is a victory. Faith is a victory. All glory is a victory that overcomes the world. His banner over us in love, our soul, the word of God. We tread the road, the saints above, we shall so try and try. By faith in life, the will and bread, swear on our every field. The faith by which they conquer death is still our shining seal. Faith is a victory. Faith is a victory. All glory is victory that overcomes the world. Do you overcome the world? What a blessed day, what a blessed opportunity to come before your presence, our God, loving and merciful, who understand our present conditions in life. In this beautiful Sabbath morning, we humbly come before your throne of grace and mercy. We pray, Heavenly Father, that through your grace and mercy and love, may you will cleanse us, may you will forgive us, so that our prayer, our worship, will be acceptable before your presence. Heavenly Father, we would like to thank you for how you gather us this morning in this place to have fellowship together and above all to worship you in the beauty of your holiness. I pray for our brothers and sisters today, our visitors, our followers through social media, that may your blessings be its one of us and help us, Heavenly Father, to come closer to the foot of the cross. And may your divine presence be in our midst as we worship you today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may now be seated. Yeah. 
Good morning, boys and girls. We're still waiting on a few <clears throat> still coming. Good morning, bigger boys and girls. Good morning. The title of our story this morning is Do the Right Thing Even When No One Is Looking. What is the title of our story, student? Um, children? Even when no one is looking. Can we say that? Do the right thing even when no one is looking. Can somebody tell me um, what the Eighth Commandment states? Any of my boys and girls can tell me what the Eighth Commandment states? The Eighth Commandment. Anybody knows? What does it say? All right, we want to ask bigger boys and girls to help us this morning. The Eighth Commandment. Boys and girls on the floor there. Can you help us? Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not steal. Thank you. Now, my little boys and girls, what does the Eighth Commandment state? Thou shalt not steal. All right, so thy story goes like this. Long time ago, there was a very, very rich king. So he has a lot of gold, diamond, and silver. Boys and girls, I hope you're listening because I'm going to ask you a question as the story goes. So he was very rich. The only problem is he did not have somebody to look over his money, so he did not have a watchman. So he devised a plan, and he sent all his servants out to get persons around to come to interview for the job. Now, it was not an easy task. How would he choose from so many men who would come for the job? Now, this was a very, very wise king, and so he devised a plan. What did he do? As he no, he did not steal. So the king was looking for a good watchman, remember? And so he's now going to send out, put a plan in action to get a good watchman. He doesn't want any, any watchman. If it's a bad watchman, what will the watchman do if he's a bad watchman? He will steal the king's money. So the king has to make sure that he get a good watchman. And so he thought about it and he said, all right, this is my plan. So he sent some of his servants to the neighboring community and he said to them go and tell some tell all the proper persons in the community that i need a watchman to watch my money at the same time the persons who his servants that were back home he said to them i want you to line all the halls the halls the bathroom everywhere just throw some gold coins and silver coins all around so that when the persons come in the guests who come in for the job they can see those gold coins Remember, I said that this was a very what? Wise king. On the day that they came, so the day came for them to come for the interview for the job of the watchman. Now, as they came, they were ushered to the feast. So the king sat down and had meal with all of them, all of the persons who came. And I think that there were maybe hundreds of people who came. After they finished eating, the king said, let us dance. We're going to have a party. Boys and girls, do you like to dance? Would you like to dance now? Do you want me to play music for you so that you can dance? No? Who wants to dance? None of you? You want me to play music? Come on, let's do some dancing. Anybody? Come on. Just for a, minute, a few minutes, seconds. Come on. Stand up. Come on. You want to? Yeah, dance. Uh, Stand up, boys and girls, and dance. You want to dance? You want to dance? All right. Thank you, my dancer. You want to dance too? Keep loose. Thank you, my 
you, boys and girls. Please see. Oh, my gosh. You look so nice. All right. So the king said everybody should dance now. But as the king, do you think everybody stood up and danced to the music? What do you think? Did they all stand up and start dancing? The guests? No, you don't think they were afraid? You think a lot of them get up and dance? Wow. As the king looked on, only one little man get up and he danced. And he jumped up and danced and he danced and he danced. And the king was there waiting for everybody to get up and dance. But nobody else moved. Only one little man danced. And he danced and danced and the king waited. The king smiled to himself. His plan was working out very well. Why do you think nobody else, not, nobody else um, got up except the one man? Any of my boys and girls can think? Why do you think no one else got up except one little man? Yes. Because he, they, the rest of the people didn't want to dance. The rest of the people didn't want to dance. They didn't want to dance. But can you tell me what they, why they didn't want to dance? Because of the music. Because of the music, right? Uh, they think that they'd be embarrassed. Some of them would be embarrassed. Anybody else? The king knew why. So the king knew why no one else wanted to dance. Remember I told you earlier that what? The king ordered his servants to put gold all over the place, on the floor, in the bathroom. All the other persons had gold and silver in their pockets. So they stole the king's money. Only one little man did not steal any money. So he could jump and prance because there was no jingling that would go on when he go on. So boys and girls... Even though you think no one is watching, you should always do the right thing. Because who is always seeing you? Who is always seeing, watching you? Your parents. Your parents are always watching you. Somebody else is always watching you? Very good. Your parents are always watching you. Can you tell me who else is always watching you? God. God is always. The teacher. The teacher. True. Yes, but God is always watching you even when no one else is watching you and he sees and he is ready to reward you for the good thing that you do. So that little man, the king was very happy because he got an honest and trustworthy watchman. Can one of my little boys and girls here again remind me what the eighth commandment is? The eighth commandment? Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not steal. Anybody else? Yes. No. Thou shalt not steal. And remember that is the word of God. So always do good even when no one is watching, and God will reward you. Anybody would like to pray for us? Which one of my boys and girls would like to pray? Yeah, you want to pray for us? Let's close our eyes and let's pray. Dear God, help us to do good all the time, even when no one is watching. Amen. Thank you, boys and girls. You may now go back to your seat. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For a beautiful story. Thank you, Sister Jackie, for the wonderful children's story. Today's title offering is for local conference advance and our offer total reading is entitled a time of a spiritual revival in second chronicles 29 3 it says in the first month of the first year of his reign he opened the doors of the temple of the lord and repaired them we worship God with our resources because we are in time of revival. Ellen G. White wrote, A revival of true goodliness among us is the greatest and most urgent of all our needs. Revival is an invitation to turn away from other gods and acknowledge the soul Lord of our lives. The book of Second Chronicles tell us about the revival during the time of King Hezekiah 
the temple was repaired. The worship service were restored. The Passover was celebrated once again. Levites were instated to ministry. Restoration of true worship was at the heart of true revival. The people's response to the call to revival compromised a concrete element. Then Hezekiah said, You have now dedicated yourself to the Lord. Come and bring sacrifice and thank offerings to the temple of the Lord. So the assembly brought sacrifices and thank offerings. And all whose hearts were willing brought burnt offerings in Second Chronicles 29.31. A spiritual revival acknowledged God as Lord. And one tangible means is to honor him with our gifts. The story of Zacchaeus in the New Testament presents giving as a result of true spiritual revival. Before he welcomed Jesus as his guest of honor, Zacchaeus was the greediest man in Jericho. He was ready to depray his country, lost his friends, forsake his religion, and sacrifice his reputations for just a little more. However, when salvation entered his house, he was prompted to give more than what he owned. I give half of my possessions to the poor, and I have cheated anybody out of anything. I will pay back four times the amount in Luke 19.8. That was his love response to the love he received from Jesus. We can give without loving, but we cannot love without giving. The call for a spiritual revival is resounding loudly in our churches. This week, as we worship with our tithes and regular offerings, it is evident the revival message has taken root in our hearts. For those our brother and sister watching online, next slide. Uh, you can log on. Uh, you may give tithes and offering through our online. You can log on to our church website. It's www.argalsdchurch.org and click on the Adventist Giving and then just follow the instructions. May they can stand, you may not collect offering while Vilma is singing the operatory music. Good morning, happy Sabbath. Um, this song is a Tagalog. It always touched me when I sing this, but in English it's my, my only gift. only gift that we can give is ourselves to God. He wants our mind, body, and soul to accept him as our personal savior. Salamat sa iyo Aking Panginoong Jesus Ako'y ibig mo At inangking lubos Ang tanging alay ko Di na makaya ng makapagtalo Mamahaling hiyas
glory to God. Help us to respond to your call of revival through prayers, singing, giving, and dedicated lives. Amen. You may now be seated. Morning, everyone. And happy Sabbath. Good to hear you from you all. Um, now is the time for a prayer. And um, before we um, I, I, um, get our prayer request this morning, there is one uh, young uh, lady who was here earlier that I talked to. Her name is Rosaline, and she is asking that you please pray for her, and that we'll be praying about it um, during our prayer this morning. But she, she said that uh, Emory Jenkins has prostate cancer and is in a very delicate state. She's actually with him right now as we speak. So... Please um, don't forget Emory Jenkins in your prayers. Please pray for him because he, uh, he's in a very uh, fragile state. So please continue to pray for him, and we'll be praying for his recovery. Um, is there any other requests to uplift this morning? Yes. Yes, and the other. Anyone else? Yes, Sister Emery. I'm spoke. And then in spoken requests, please raise your hands. Amen. All right, let's uh, begin our prayer this morning. Uh, please kneel where you are seated and let's pray as we uh, pray to the Lord this morning. Thank you. Lord, as we pray, take our hearts and minds far. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for waking us up to another day, for bringing us all here safely, Lord, to congregate with you this morning. Also to our online viewers, we thank you that they are also watching us, Lord, through Facebook and YouTube. We pray for them as well. And we thank you that they are here joining us in our um, service this morning. Now, Lord, um, as we um, have some requests to uplift you this morning, Lord, again, we pray for Emory Jenkins, Lord, who uh, um, Sister Rosaline has requested. Please be with him, Lord. Please be with Emory that he will heal, Lord. He has a prostate cancer, Lord, and he is very um, in a bad state. So please be with him this morning, Lord. Please continue to be by his side because you are the great physician, Lord. And we know that you are able to heal those no matter how sick they are, Lord. So we bring him up to you this morning. And we pray that you'll please be with him. And be, please give comfort to Sister Rosaline as well, Lord, that you'll give her um, the love and comfort she needs at this time and the support. Um, 
And uh, Lord, we also pray for um, just Auntie uh, Adi's uh, daughter, Lord, who has contracted COVID. Uh, please also be with her, Lord, this, th as we speak this morning, Lord. Please give her healing. Give her the time and the um, restoration that she needs, Lord, that she will be able to recover fully and go back to her normal life. And we have a great testimony for you, O oh Lord. Lord, I also pray and uplift our unspoken request this morning, Lord. Uh, and any of the requests that um, our online viewers may have as well, Lord. We pray for all the requests. All the hands are lifted this morning, Lord. You know each individual and specific request in their hearts, Lord. So I pray for those requests this morning, and I pray that you'll please um, may your will be done, Lord, in whatever request they have. Uh, Lord, um, we thank you for hearing and answering our prayers this morning. We pray for the service, the rest of the service, that it will be a blessing to you, Lord, and a blessing to others. And we pray for our speaker, Pastor uh, Ceylon, as he brings us the message as well. Touch his lips that he may give the words to speak that only comes from you, O oh Lord. We thank you and we praise you, Lord, and we thank you for hearing and answering your prayers this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, happy Sabbath, church. Before we sing, we'd like to share this uh, verse from the Bible found in 2 Peter 1, verse 29, or 2 Peter 1, verse 19. And it says on there, we also have the prophetic message as something completely reliable, and you will do well to pay attention to it. As to a light shining in a dark place, until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. The light shining in that dark place is Jesus, and may his light always shine through us, and so others may see him in us. May you be blessed with this song. of Sharon show me how to grow in beauty in God's sight. Fairest of ten thousand, make me a reflection of your light. I pray day 
peace, Lord, shine down on me. Let your love shine through me in the night. Lead me, Lord, I'll follow anywhere you open up the door. Let your word speak to me. Show me what I've never seen. Take what's wrong and make it right. Day star shine down on me. Let your love shine through me in the night. Lord, I see a world that's dying, wounded by the pastor. Groping in the darkness, haunted by the years of past defeat. But when I see you standing near me, Lord, shining with compassion in your eyes, I pray day star shine down on me. Let your love shine through me in the night. Lead me, Lord, I'll follow anywhere you open up the door. Let your word speak to me, show me what I've never seen. shine down on me let your love shine through me in the night day star shine down on me let your love shine through me in the night day star shine down on me let your love shine through me in the night. Good morning, church, and happy Sabbath. Today's scripture reading is Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 through 3. Long ago, at many times and many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through, through <coughs> whom also he created the world. He is the radiance of God the glory of God and the exact imprint of, the, of, of his power after making purifications for sin. He sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. This is the word of the Lord. Amen.
Good morning and happy Sabbath to all. <clears throat> I'm so happy and delighted to see you all this morning. <clears throat> and above all, I'm so delighted to see a lot of visitors today. Welcome to Argyle Forest Seventh-day Adventist Church. And thank you once again for choosing this church as your home church while you are here in Jacksonville living for the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ and Savior. Amen? Amen. I hope you will not transfer to another state and then Christ will come again. <laughs> it's so wonderful to welcome as well our brothers and sisters, our friends watching us through social media, Wherever you are right now, we welcome you in our uh, church worship this beautiful Sabbath morning. I know I received some messages from my friends from uh, uh, London, from Ireland, and uh, yes, of course, from my native land in the Philippines. They are watching us. They are following us. And uh, we praise God for the wisdom that he bestowed to, uh, to the world that we able to use this, uh, you know, I'm not using the TikTok, I'm not using this uh, TikTok or whatever TikTok you are using there. But, you know, we would like to thank you for the social media that uh, even though you are at the end of the world, I'm in the end, other part of the world, we are still communicating to each other, right? The Bible fulfilled what was written in the last days, knowledge shall increase. So today I would like to, to share to you the message of God, which is, uh, uh, yes, of course, from the Bible. But before we will uh, go further, I would like to ask uh, the congregations to please bow our heads for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, this morning we invite your Divine presence be in our midst as we continue to worship you. We invite your Holy Spirit to dwell in our hearts. May you will give us wisdom, Heavenly Father, as we study your words together. We pray, Heavenly Father, that may you will continue to strengthen us, to empower and guide us, Lord, uh, closer to the foot of the cross, so that when thou shalt come, all of us, Heavenly Father, are ready to be answered in that heavenly home. Today, as your humble servant will share your message, may you will equip me with the power of your Holy Spirit and inspire me, Lord, to share the word of hope. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for granting our request. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. <clears throat> I know that uh, uh, our teachers, our students, the the already back to school, I think, a month ago, right? Just this month. So I know our, te our students, our teachers are excited that uh, they are doing now the face-to-face the, uh, -face classes, uh, but there are some parts of the world that they are still uh, using the, the, the virtual classes. And I'm so glad as well that uh, in the midst of the turmoil, in the midst of of the uncertainty of the world, uh, in the midst of the challenges that we're facing for the past couple of years. But still, we are here sitting together, worshiping the Lord with good health, with strength, and we give glory and honor to the Lord that we able to cross the Red Sea of the pandemic. Amen? Amen. What a precious gift of God to all of us. Now today I would like to share to you the message back to the fundamentals. Back to the fundamentals. Now I know that uh, a lot of our churches today, there is a very disturbing trend saying, and uh, too often we could see in many churches that uh, the apparent apathy of Christians can be seen anywhere. When we look in our church today, in our society today, there are many attending church services, but it seems 
appears that they are only going through the motions. I remember when I was, uh, uh, when I was young, I don't like to go to church, but my father is always uh, watching me. Hey, where are you? Every Saturday morning he's watching me where I am going. Hey, where are you? Where are you going? I said, I need to, to feed our, our buffalo. I said, no, 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 no. I'm the one to feed the buffalo because he knows at the moment I'll, I ride in the back of the buffalo, I will not going back home until they will go into church. So my father, every, every Saturday morning, he will not allow me to feed the buffalo, but he is the one so that I could not leave home. I'm just going to church it's because I'm going through the motion. It's, I'm going because my family is going to the church. They're singing. They're praying. They're doing Bible study. But their cells, their prayer, it seems, is a lifeless. Certainly, God desires more from His children. God desires more from us who are sitting here this morning, who are worshiping Him. He wants that we have a vibrant life as we worship Him. He wants that we have a vibrant life as we go into church. He wants, uh, he wants God, God wants us to have a vibrant life when we are going to walk, when we are going to the market, when we are going to the store, so that we could represent Him as the living God. God wants us to become like Jesus in order to reflect Christ in, or, in order to reflect the character of God to the world. Talking in sports. When a player in a slump, such persons or a team, it's just like going through the motion. But they are not performing up to their true potentials. They are not playing according to their capabilities. What will be the solutions when a team will be losing? What will be the solutions of Rick Hatton when he was knocked out by, by Manny Pacquiao? He needs to go to the basic, to the fundamentals of training. He needs to, to regain again the skills, the strength, the talent that he could win again to the next game. The same is true in our Christian journey. When we find our, ourselves in a slump spiritual journey, we need to go back to the fundamentals. We need to go back to the Word of God. What was the reason? So what is the reason why my spiritual journey is getting slumped? We need to go back to the fundamentals. There is a very alarming survey with this couple, the first couple of years when this pandemic hits. Yes, of course, there are some reasons. Because according to the survey, according to the Institute for Family Studies published on January 20, 2022. According to the Institute for Family Studies that they published, as uh, I said, January 20, 2022. This says, they suggest that religious attendance has declined significantly in the past two years. The share of the regular churchgoer is down by six percent points from 34 percent in, in 2019 and 28 percent in 2021. So, if you see this trend here, 
There are only very slow percent, uh, there are um, going slow percentage to the people who are attending the churches one to two times per month. How many times you are going to church? Yes, of course, we are here every Saturday, Wednesday, Friday. But in, uh, in a few times a year, this is the trend of the attendance, but never and seldom going to church. It's getting more higher and higher. In 2021, the percentage is always getting going up that people are no longer going to church. People are not interested anymore of attending the church. Yes, of course, we understand it's because of the pandemic, but even to prior to this, church attendance in the United States is declining. And not only that, according to Today's uh, uh, survey, there are the 18 year old above, between 18 and 34 year old, the percentage is getting high that they are not interested anymore attending the church. And I don't know what's the basis of this uh, survey. But the, the American African attendance is, is the church is the percentage that are not attending the church is getting high, it's 45%. And the married couple, the married persons with kids, 46%. That's what I'm trying to look at it. What was the reasons of this why the married with kids are higher percentage that not attending in the church. So what was the reasons for that? This is one of the things that I would like to share. <clears throat> Apathy describes as lack of personal interest and enthusiasms. In your personal relationship, and you have apathy, they have this kind of feeling of indifferent to spend time with others. So I think this is the main reasons why there are more and more people are not attending the church. It's because of apathy. Most people experience apathetic feelings from time to time in special way during the time of stress, during the time of illnesses. And it's very, very understandable that the survey that I show is too high in percentage. It's because, as I said, the pandemics for the last decades or the last two years, couple of years that we experience in life. So, what will happen if this kind of or this apathy in life, we, if will not be solved, or if, or if we cannot find the solutions for this? It says here, a persistent apathy can affect your relationship of every everyday life, and over well and overall our well-being. It might also happen as a symptoms due to the medical and me mental health conditions which could get worse without treatment. So how this affects in our spiritual life? So the same thing in our spiritual life. Spiritual apathy, if it will not be treated properly, it will lead to backsliding, and falling away from Christ. The prophet Jeremiah said, <clears throat> Our backsliding is great. We have sinned against you. Backsliding in the scriptures is always seen as a very, very serious matter. In Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 19, it says, Your wickedness will punish you. Your backsliding will rebuke you. 
Consider then and realize how evil and bitter it is for you when you forsake the Lord. Your God, have no awe of me, declares the Lord the Almighty. Spiritual apathy, coldness or indifference can affect even the most faithful, sincere Christian one time or another. It will affect in my life. Feelings of coldness, disinterested in the church, disinterested in, uh, in, in church activities, it will affect our spiritual journey. Overcoming such apathy is necessary for our Christian walk with God. Sorry for that. <clears throat> In First John, in First John chapter five, verse thirteen, God says, "I write these things to you, who believes in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life." And Paul says to the church of Romans, "The Spirit Himself." Bears witness without, with our spirit that we are the children of God. So now my brothers and sisters in Christ, my friends, those who profess to be Christians, walking with God, reading their Bibles every day, praying every day, believing in Christ Jesus, the Son of the living God, and know that you are the children of the living God, and you have eternal life. Then, what cause you to be falling away from Christ. We know we have faith. We know we, are, we, the, we have hope for the second coming of Christ. We believe in Jesus Christ who died on the cross to cleanse us, to forgive us. And I believe that Jesus can give me eternal life then what was the cause you lost your love and passions for the Lord? I would like to share to you one of the reasons for the spiritual apathy seen in the believers' lives. One of the reasons that I experienced apathy in my life one of the reasons that I lost my interest in, in the ministry, I lost my, 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 my interest in the church, I lost my interest in doing the work of God, it's because the sins in my, in my life. And this is one of the reasons why most of the members in the church are going down in their, in, in their uh, uh, spiritual journey, it's because of the sins in, the, in their lives. The Word of God tells us that sin is deceitful and it will separate us from God. In Isaiah chapter 59 verse 2, Isaiah says it's because of your iniquities. This is the reason that separates you between God and you. This is the reason that God will hide His face. This is the reason that God will not hear our prayer. God spoke to us through prophet Micah, chapter 3, verse 4. Then they will cry to the Lord, but He will not answer them. Instead, He will hide His face from them at the time, because they have practiced evil in their deeds. The wisest man in the world, King Solomon, Proverbs chapter 1, verse 28. Then they will call upon me, but I will not answer. They will seek me diligently, but they cannot find me. 
God spoke to Moses. <clears throat> Whoever has sinned against me, I will blot his name out in the book of life. The reason why? Because of sin. For every human problem, my brothers and sisters in Christ, my friends who are listening us, watching us, for every human problem, God has a solution. Even though that we created that problem, God is rescues us from when we, when we call upon his name. No matter what problems I commit, no matter what problems that I created and makes me separate from God, God did not stop calling upon me. God did not stop calling upon you. He is always finding a means that he could get back. He could bring you back at the foot of the cross. The hand of God is for God to all who seek him. What a wonderful promise of God. The hand of God is for God to all who seek him. In Ezra chapter 8 verse 22. Though your sins are like a scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red as a crimson, they shall be like wool. God is offering a full and a free forgiveness for their sins and a complete transformation of life. Friends, my beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, we can confess our sins no matter what it is. And trust in his offer of salvation, through faith in, in his son, Jesus Christ. Accept the full pardon through the blood of Jesus who sits on the cross. Christ will remove all our transgressions at the moment you will surrender your life to Jesus. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 25. God promises. He says, I am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake. And I will not remember your sins no more. This is the promise of God. In Psalms chapter 103, verse 12, he says he removes all our transgressions. In Hebrews chapter 8, verse 12, For I will be merciful toward their iniquities, and I will remember their sins no more. In John chapter 1, verse 29, Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the whole world. Amen? Sin separate us from God. But God's grace and mercy through Jesus Christ restore anyone who will receive Him as Lord of their lives. This is the promise of God. Now the question is, what was the cause of spiritual apathy? First sin in the, in the believer's life, and the second one, losing our first love with God. Losing our first love for the Lord. This was the Lord's condemnation of the Ephesian church. In Revelation chapter 2, verse 4, you have forsaken the love you had first. When Paul wrote the same church around A.D. 60. <clears throat> he commended them for their, for their love in Christ. If you have your Bible, or if you have your, your electronics Bible in your palm right now, I would like to, to invite you to open your Bible in the book of Ephesians, chapter 1, verses 15, chapter 1, verse 15 and 16. This is the commendations of Paul to the church of Ephesus. For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your love for all the saints, 
in 16. I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. Paul admonish or fall recom praise and give glory to the to the members to the church in Ephesians. It's because of their faithfulness to the Lord. It's because of their love keep burning to the Lord. But thirty years later, they had left their first love. Their passions had waned. Why? Perhaps the Ephesians had begun to take for granted what they had in Christ. Living for Christ was no longer a daily, a daily adventures for them. It was becoming boring going back to the church. Did you experience that in your life? Our young people, when you encourage them, going, we will go to the church, go back to the church. No, I'm not. I feel bored in the church. How many times you experienced that in your life? And they were losing sight of their eternal purpose in God. The church of Ephesus knew the teachings of Christ, but they were not living according to His will. They are not living in His power. Jesus... <clears throat> Jesus is not the center of their lives, but rather outside of the sidelines. In so doing, they lost their vibrant love and passion for Christ. Is day Bible Commentary, <clears throat> Volume 7, page 963. Half-hearted Christians are worse than infidels. For their deceptive words and non-committed positions lead many to astray. The infidel shows his colors. The lukewarm Christians deceive both sides. He is either a good worldling nor a good Christian. Satan uses him to do a work that no one else can do. Can you imagine that? The church of Ephesus had lost its love for God. The church of Ephesus had lost their, its love for God, the loss for the truth, for doing the work and for the brethren. In place of these key fundamentals, people were listening to the deceptive doctrines. For some, holding on oppositions was not important than holding on to the truth. Even today, even today, some are more concerned with holding oppositions in the church. Perhaps serving as an elder, serving as a deacon, serving as a secretary, serving as a, a, a children's teacher, serving as a Bible teacher, serving as a lay volunteer pastor. but they lost their love in Christ. The lessons of the Ephesians era is clear. The lessons from the church of Ephesus is clear. Get back on track. Do the work. Preach the gospel with zeal. Love the truth and love its other. We need to restore our love in Christ. We need to restore our enthusiasms, our energy in preaching the gospel. We need to restore our love to our fellow men, to the community who are sur in, surrounding us. We need to restore our love going back to the nursing home and sharing the gospel of God.
how to restore your apathy. Energize your faith. Faith is a defined as a belief with strong con con convictions. Complete trust in God. Confidence, reliance, or devotions. And I would like to share to you the scriptural de definitions of faith. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for. The convictions of things not seen. For by it, the people of old received their commendations. By faith, we understand that the universe was created by the word of God. So that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible. The Bible clearly says that faith is the assurance of the things that we hope for. We are hoping for the second coming of Christ. We have the songs in Church Hymnal 2.1.4.10. We have this hope that burns within our heart. Hope in the coming of the Lord. We have this faith that Christ alone can impart. So I cannot impart to you this faith. It's only Christ. Faith in the promise of His word. We believe the time is near. When the nations far and near shall awake and shout and sing, Hallelujah, Christ is King. We have this hope that burns within our heart. Hope in the coming of the Lord. Amen? Amen? My brothers and sisters in Christ, as we look not to the things that are sin, but to the things that are unseen, for the things that sin are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. Yes, I did not see Jesus face to face, but I, I have this hope. I believe He will come again. And this hope will give me an eternal life in holding Jesus. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 8, he says, Though you have not seen Him, you love Him. And even though you do not see Him now, you believe in Him and are filled with an expressible and glorious joy for you. You are receiving the end results of your faith, the salvations of your souls. The reward of your faith in Jesus will be the salvations of your souls. Now, how important our faith? Faith in God is essential for placing Him. Because in Hebrews 11 verse 6, And it is impossible to please God without faith. And anyone who wants to come to him must believe God exists and he rewards those who sincerely seek him. Faith in Jesus is essential to finding forgiveness and eternal life. I told you that you would die in your sins. If you do not believe that I am He, you will indeed die for your sins. Jesus performs many other sights in the presence of His disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. What will happen if we don't have faith? If we do not have, if without faith, the only alternative is doubt and accompanied with fear. In Matthew chapter 14, verses 30 to 31, this is the story of doubting Thomas when they are in the Sea of Galilee. And when they saw Jesus walking on the water, and then they are afraid and said, there is a ghost coming to us. But when Jesus heard that one, he says, no, don't be afraid. I am he, I'm Jesus. You crucified. I was alive. I'm walking with you. 
I'm coming with you. Doubting, doubting Peter says, Lord, if it is you, if it is you, let me walk in the water. And Jesus said, come, come, come here. And yes, Peter took off the boat and walked in the water. But when Peter saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sing, Oh Lord, oh, oh Lord, oh, help me, help me, help me. He starts doubting. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took hold of him, saying, Oh, you of a little faith, why have you doubt? Yes, there are some of us have doubts in our faith, have doubts if we will be safe. What shall we do with our apathy? We need to energize our faith. The Word of God is designed to produce faith. Romans chapter 10 verse 17. So faith comes from the hearing, that is the hearing, the good news about Christ. Reading or hearing God's Word is like planting a garden. If you want to grow a garden, if you want to grow a beautiful flower, if you want to grow a, a, a nice vegetables, you need to plant a seeds in your garden. God's word is the seed that grows the faith. Knowing his promises that God says about you, knowing his promises that God says about your life, knowing his promises that God says about his plan for you. Jesus' plan for eternal life. Becoming familiar with the Bible and what faith is all about by, med by meditating on his contents. This will give you the fundamentals of increasing your faith. Spending your time every day Communing with God through the scripture. It will energize your faith. It will erase your doubt. It will strengthen your walk in life. John chapter 20 verses 30 to 31. Now Jesus did many, many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But as I said, these are written so that we believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Seeking God diligently and reading the Word of God in the Bible, we can energize our faith. Ellen White says the Bible is a role of faith and doctrine. Seeking God, reading the Word of God, can energize our faith. How to energize our faith? The last one. Do not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. That's the reason why we are here every Sabbath because we are worshiping together, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. It is the manner of some, but exhorting one another as much as the, as the more as you see the day is approaching. Yes, we have this hope. We believe Christ will come very soon. My brothers and sisters in Christ, we will not be weary of coming together in the church. We will not be weary of supporting the work of God. We will not be weary of sharing what we have. We will not be weary in building the church of God. I believe, I hope, it's because of your faith, it's because you will energize your faith, we could be able to build the church of God in Argyle Forest. Amen? Thank you. God heard your promise. God heard your commitment. And God will bless you more. 
God will sustain you. God will preserve you. God will, will enrich you because He knows that you have this commitment to help, to support, to build His church. The Word of God encourages us. As Christians, we should regard it as a sacred duty to meet together for the worship of God. As a Christian, it is our duty to exhort one another when we, are, when we gather together for public worship. Brothers and sisters in Christ, to solve our apathy, we need to energize our faith. Faith is being sure of what we hope and certain of what we do not see. Vine's dictionary says, faith is a firm conviction. Brothers and sisters in Christ, God says that we need to sustain, we need to hold our faith. Faith is in God is essential to place Him. Faith in Jesus is essential to find for, to finding forgiveness and eternal life. Without faith, the only alternatives is doubt and accompanied with fear. We need to energize our faith through the Word of God. We need to energize our faith as we gather together, as we assemble together, as we worship together, as we exert together and encourage one another. My brothers and sisters in Christ, God is calling us that we need to energize our faith. We need to continue our walk with Him. We need to empower our faith. Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. My brothers and sisters in Christ, if we fail discouraged in our spiritual journey, if we fail weak in our physical walk, God inviting us, come to me. Energize your faith. Read the word of God because this is our spiritual food. Jesus is calling all of us that we need to walk by faith, not by sight. How many of you today believe and hope for the soon coming of Christ? Thank you. Heavenly Father, we raise our hands before your presence. We have this hope. We have this faith that you will come soon and very soon. Heavenly Father, while we are waiting for, you, for your own appearing, you entrusted us, Lord, to preach the gospel, to share the message of hope. You encourage us, Lord, to build your church. Help us, Lord, to carry the responsibility that you entrusted upon us today. Heavenly Father, as we raise our hands, as we sustain and we keep our hope and faith in Jesus Christ, Lord, we know we are weak, we are sinful, we are human, but thank you that you promise us that we can do all things through Christ who give us the strength and the power. Father, as we depart in this place, may your mercy, love, grace, and love will sustain us, strengthen us, keep us safe, and mold us into your likeness. Thank you, Lord, for granting our request. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Thank you, Pastor Jason, for the wonderful guests we have today. Let's all stand up and sing our closing hymn. <coughs> hymn number 523, My Faith Has Found a Resting Place. <coughs> Thank you, Lord, for sending Jesus here and died on the cross to cleanse us, to accept us, and thank you that he was resurrected to give us a blessed assurance, to give us a blessed hope that soon and very soon he will come again and he will bring us all together in that heavenly home and we will worship together before your presence and there is no more pain nor sorrows nor death nor nor separations because you are always with us heavenly father as we continue to walk in faith as we continue to hold our hope for your own coming lord may you will continue to hold us as well in your loving arms. May you will continue to heal our broken body. May you will continue to give, our, uh, to give strength in spite of our weaknesses. Lord, I pray for those who are not with us today. It's because of their physical infirmities in life. Wherever they are, I pray that may your hands will touch over them, Lord, so that next uh, Sabbath they could join with us to worship you. Father, thank you for granting our request. Thank you for your blessed assurance that you will come again to be with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing as we sing, Soon Jesus Will Return. <clears throat>
Thank you for joining our worship this morning. Have a blessed, thankful, and peaceful Sabbath, everyone. You may take some bread as you exit on the right.